Did you receive like did you receive like pushback from the Orthodox community? Because obviously not everybody's open to the idea of like evolution. Well, I've had both both pushback and push in. The late Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. I didn't know who Jonathan Sachs was when I first met him. And this goes back to 25 years, it could be, I guess. I was at a Limu conference in, in, in England for a while. He would speak there also, he was chief rabbi. Then he stopped doing it, I think, because men and, and, and I don't know, but all I know is I'm sitting in, like in the green room before the talk and I have a coffee taken and a bunch of people standing around and someone came up to me talking and said, and I, and he said, you, I said, my name, Jerry Schroeder. And to this day, I, I can't tell you, it's, decade, it's over a decade and a half ago. Out of the corner of my two people went like that, turned around when I said Jerry Schroeder, just like that. And I wasn't looking, there was talking to the person is it on the screen now, but at the corner of my saw, and it was, it was Rabbi Sachs. And the next thing I knew, I was talking with them, still not knowing his position, or uh, shows how naive I, I was. He said, and I've never said this publicly, but he, he, said, he said, it changed my life. Wow. Now, I want to make it clear. Rabbi Sachs of Blessed Memory has a life I can't show him like this. The amount that I changed in his life was, you know, Im immeasurable. But it was <laughs> enough to say out of this. So, and it was, he'd always seen science as either neutral or an enemy, never as a full pro. That led to him writing a book called The Great Partnership. Right. One wow. of my favorite books. One of my favorite books. Two quotes. Say it again, please. It's one of my favorite books, The Great Partnership. It's incredible. And that was, you'll notice in the index, he lists all, all of my books. I have not read the whole book, but. But that is, that is the great partnership that exists between us and God and between understanding and not understanding. There's a whole, you know, that's the closing line. The assault. I can't see my head of the Superman written, but I was saying, the assault to make, you know, at the end, the, uh, in the, uh, in the, in, in, in British sheet, and that uh, to make, and that we're part of that deal. Of, look, he asked, he asked, God asked Adam to name the animals. I mean, right there, you got a shit move. You know, uh, to guard the garden, etc. It's et a the great partnership. Any event, I didn't realize that till the last two years later. But then we had a we not meeting, but when we would meet, it was always a meeting of hugging. He wow. and I. He first. I, I wouldn't be so forward. As anyway. Wow. Anyway, so, uh, yeah. so so that's the pull in, but the push out. I'll tell you the push out. I don't know the hierarchy. I'm, I'm not into that in the hierarchy of the orthodoxy, etc. So I'm teaching at Aish. I'm getting, I, I bike usually to Aish. And uh, I'm about to leave. And one of the head people at Aish at the time, Rabbi Weinberg was still alive, but it was it wasn't he, someone else. He said, maybe it was him, in fact. Anyway, he said, be prepared to get a call because these parade, and they mentioned the name, my memory from names is very bad. Uh, they're going to call you and say not nice things to you. I go home. The phone rings at this time. Is my my kids are in the military, but they're at home because they're pre-military. So I'm not sure how many years ago it was. I get this phone call. They picked one of my sons picked up the one of our sons picked up the phone, and the person identified him. Now I don't know this stuff, but you know if you go to Orthodox uh, high schools here, you know they say no son. Even if he told me I wouldn't know. So I get the phone call. What's the phone call? What you say is true. Stop teaching it or we'll put you in the Wow. The they, mafia. Said, they said it's true. The hierarchy of, of, I don't want to say what stream of Judaism it was. It wasn't before war. I mean, it was Orthodox, but I don't say, I'm not saying what clan it was. Uh -huh. Saying is true. Stop teaching it or we'll put you in the that's incredible. Don't put me in hero. But that's very sad because if you're fearful, that's only my lack of ignorance. That's it's called stupidity. It's not ignorance, it's stupid. Ignorance isn't ignorance isn't a problem. No one everything. You know, you can have Google in your brain and you still won't know everything. That's ignorance. That's not a problem. The problem is is the answer that in that. I say it all, always in my, in my, not always, very, almost always in my classes, I, I say the most important teaching in the entire is in Brachot. It's in the first 10 pages of Brachot. 
Teach your tongue to say, I don't know. Teach your tongue to say, I don't know. And this person that called me, I could tell this conversation, he, he couldn't even tell if it was true or not. He just assumed that I wasn't lying when he threatened me with heroin. But there's so many people that argue against the Bible, scientists that argue against the Bible, and they can't even read the Bible except in mistranslation. And, and on the other side, there are theologians that have no idea what e equals mc squared once. I had one, one person say, oh, I, I thought it was a, a typo. They had to say two. You know, it's mc squared with the square sign. I thought you meant two. So, and, and they'll argue against, so it's some, against science. So it's not, it's not only the theologians that don't know science, but haven't learned to keep their tongues to say, I don't know, but the scientists have the problem also. The oh. scientists have the problem also. Uh, I, I'm going to give an example uh, with naming names, okay, of a scientist, because he's a wonderful human being. Unfortunately, about eight or nine years ago, he died of cancer. Mm -hmm. Steve, I'm at MIT, up the rift, up the Charles River is Harvard. You know, they're very quite... Harvard and MIT are quite close together. You, you, you can row from one to the other if you want to avoid the traffic. And Stephen Jay Gould was a wonderful human being. And I've spent time speaking with him. He's a really good human being. He's dead now, but I mean, he wasn't. Right. And he loved the Bible. He loved the Bible as literature. He thought it was wonderful. But he thought it was literature, a myth. And he said, I can prove it. And what's sad is... I only found this in his writings after he had he was he, he, he was dead, so I couldn't couldn't. He said, "I can prove to you that it's wrong. Look at the animals listed on day number oh boy, my head, day number uh, five, four. Right, I'm going to get a text out something I can't remember. I haven't, haven't talked about this in a while. Uh, it seems like I find my He said, "Look at that." Oh, we can cut it out. So cute. Look at the animals. Look at the animals listed on, on day number on day number five. They only appear on day number six. And what were the animals? There's a whole bunch of animals. And then he said, and birds. Stephen Jay Gould is a person who works with fossils, paleontology. He knew the fossil record inside and out, and he knew that the animals listed on day number five mostly day five animals, but then there's also birds listed on day five, and birds do not appear until day six in the fossil record. So if God wrote the Bible, how could there be birds on day number five? But of course, birds are only on day number five in Stephen Jay Gould's English translation. See, that's what amazes me. A man, as is a full professor and a brilliant human being, would have the foolishness to criticize a text that he couldn't even read. Birds don't appear on day number five. The word is oaf. Now, oaf and modern Hebrew, I'm lucky, lucky he didn't say chickens, but he didn't know enough Hebrew to know that oaf today means chicken. But oaf biblically is any animal that flies. Oaf is a creature that flies. So consistently in my classes, I ask the kids, you know, what would be the logic of the first types of animals that fly? Sometimes they say pterodactyl. I say, think more normally. The first animals be fly were very simple. So what would they be? Insects. Hmm. Insects map exactly onto, that's what's so beautiful about the Torah. A human wouldn't know that, as Gould didn't know it, and that's his business. But insects map exactly onto the time frame of day five wow. and not day six. And the text doesn't say bird. It says oaf. The general category of flight enters the fossil record on the animals and the time span of day, of day five. And but Stephen didn't know that. I suppose it now, I'm sure, I'm sure. But he, you know, I'm so, so, and what's sad is that these wonderful people, who, scientists who criticize the Bible and they can't even read it. I mean, because you're reading in translation, you're not reading it. Like you, right. Moses again calls it a sheer poem. Anyone that knows poetry, I mean, think of Shakespeare in Italian, I'm not Italian, but yeah, even Italian or in Hebrew. It's kind of lost something from the original. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. So is have a little bit of science, a little bit of Torah, then you can find a, a shiluv, a integration in place of conflict. Very well. Beautiful. Sure, Beautiful. Very nice. And actually, so I want to talk about 
the your book Genesis of the Big Bang was the first like credible scientific support of the Torah that I read as a teenager, and I highly recommend it to anyone who hasn't read it. Um, can you explain to our audience like, what is the significance of the discovery of the Big Bang in light of the commonly held view of the scientific community that preceded it? Obviously, before that, it, they believed in the eternal universe. Yeah, unchanging eternal. Einstein believes that the, the Einstein, that's each, the famous Einstein, he said it's the biggest blunder of my professional life. Einstein in, in, reveals, he discovers the laws of relativity, uses them to already, uh, uses them for writing a a a, uh, a cosmological co uh, equation that would describe the development of the universe. And it didn't make sense. It showed his, his mathematics showed the universe was either expanding or contracting, depending on the magnitude of whichever constants he had in it. And he said, that's ridiculous. Everyone knows the fixed stars. And he changed, you must be aware of this. He changed his, yeah. he changed his equation. He put in a fudge factor to balance the expansion number to make it zero. You know, one minus one equals zero. And he put that in. And later he said in his famous letter to Max Born, the biggest blunder of my professional life. He could have predict, he could have predicted the creation of the universe on pure theoretical grounds. Eventually, it was it was proven by Hubble and others, and uh, by uh, you know, that by observation that there's a, an expansion. But the the discovery of the Big Bang, which is a term, by the way, that was was coined in de, in in uh, derision. Fred Hoyle, who was in absolute certain that the universe is eternal, and he was being interviewed in 19, which isn't the Dark Ages, this is way under 100 years ago, and it was on the BBC, and the interviewer on the BBC, to put some spice into the discussion, decided he's going to ask Hoyle a loaded question. He said, well, Professor Hoyle, knowing Hoyle thought the universe was eternal. What do you think about all these colleagues' views that say there was a creation? He said, yeah, they think there was some kind of big bang. <laughs> he, the, term, the press picked it up. He, he coined that term in derision. No, oh, there was a big bang. Well, there was a big bang. It didn't go bang, but it was big blue. You know, it was a big creation. Later, he becomes an over-the-top believer over by, by his discovery of how the elements are made in the stars. I mean, so at the end, F, but... The, the discovery of the creation of the universe, I say it this way, this discovery of the creation of the universe, the Big Bang, is the best news for God since Moses came down from Sinai. Hmm. The only thing in Mac that is this, he's reestablishing the state of Israel. Nothing else. It is the best news for God since Moses. I mean, there was a creation to the universe. You know what that means? There was a beginning. It doesn't that you had to have a beginner, but it does prove and that's what's important. It does prove that you have to have an, a, a, some force, forces or water that predate the existence of time as we know it and space and matter and physicality that bring this into being. I always say as we know it because to say before time, how can you say before time if there's no, you know, if that's about time, so it's time as we know it. And it may be a video that you're not aware of, but there's a video called Proof of God in Five Minutes. I've seen it. It has way over three million views. It's probably close. Web-wide, someone searched almost five million views with people hijacking it using different terms. But I urge your listeners, I'm the talking head. The graphics are phenomenal. I have nothing to do with the graphics. It uses only data from NASA, National Space Authority, only data from NASA. And it shows that NASA's description of the forces that created the universe and how the universe is created are exactly the Jewish tradition that goes back at least 2000 to Rav Takuma and 800 years to the Ramban. Exactly, it's an exact unmatch to how our tradition said the universe is created from nothing and started as a minuscule point and expanded out. And, and all those data are pure NASA data until the last 30 seconds of the video, and I say, notice that that happens to be the biblical directives. So I urge, urge, if I'm allowed to, you can cut this. Proof of God in five minutes, Jerry Schroeder. And uh, uh, so, thanks, good news for God. There was a creation to the universe. 
What people don't understand is that the word term Big Bang does not say what made the Big Bang go bang. It is only a secular, neutral way of saying creation. Of course, creation, God forbid, sounds like a creator. So uh -huh. that's the best thing is saying, you know, a person that's against the creator. But he stuck with the fact that there was a creation to our. Right. It was. Very nice. Very nice.